once I put the wheels back on here, I don't have to uh, pay attention back here for a while. Know that the brakes in the back are good for uh, at least a couple of years to go. Welcome back to Low Method Classic and it's finally part two of fixing the rear brakes of my wife's new to her 2006 supercharged Range Rover. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen the previous videos and you feel like catching up, I'll put a link to a playlist up above on the Range Rover so you can catch up. But uh, basically, uh, before Christmas my wife and I got this uh, 2006 Range Rover supercharged and it had a few issues. And I've been going through it, you know, slowly in my spare time. It's going to be her daily driver and our sort of main family car. There's been some issues with uh, getting parts and parts being lost uh, in the mail and such with um, the holidays, lockdowns, and COVID. But finally, we have everything. So there'll be a couple episodes now of finishing off it. We need to do the brakes in the back. I started those after Christmas in the beginning of January. So now it's uh, more like the end of January. We can finish those off in today's episode. Then we're going to finish off the uh, some things in the engine room. We're going to do the belts, um, both of the belts, uh, some tensioners and some either pulleys are bad. And then that is pretty much it. We're just going to do a gearbox, gearbox service and then it should be ready to be back on the road and she should be able to enjoy the car. So we'll head on over to the barn where the Range Rover is still sitting. It's not the ideal place to work on it, but it's where I could, you know, have it for a while. I haven't actually tried to get in here in the workshop. That will be something in a future video to see if it actually fits in here. I'm not sure if it does, but let's head over to the barn and finally, finally fix those rear brakes. Finally, after a few weeks wait, here we have the parts to finish the rear brakes. So I already have the caliper, which you saw in the last episode, but then when I looked at it, remember that the brake hose, the metal part was starting to rust so I felt that no point in putting everything else back on new when uh, that wasn't really looking safe. So we got new brake hoses on both sides. I haven't checked the other side but might as well replace that one since the other one looks bad. And then the brake pads, there was some meat left on them but I thought since I have to order these anyways and wait for those and I might as well get brake pads as well. So new brake pads, new brake hoses, new caliper and everything should be really nice. So let's get on over here and continue um, having a look at it. Everything is pretty much the exact same as last time. I just put the caliper back on there loosely without the pads so it wouldn't put any strain on everything. I have sprayed this a couple times with penetrating fluid and cracked that so that is actually moving. I was worried it wouldn't because it did look, you know, like it's been on there for a while but that seems to be no problem at all. Plan of attack is to put the caliper back up here again, mount the new caliper on there with the new pads, put the new hose on that, sort of lay it in the right place, loosen that up there, and really quickly connect up the new hose and not spill too much brake fluid. Then we're gonna let the gravity bleed a little bit, and then I will use a vacuum bleeder just to bleed the last of it, air out of it, and that should be fine, and then it's pretty much the same procedure on the other side. However, I'm just gonna film this one side. The brake hoses are different for right and left, but this one seems to be the correct one for this side. The other one has to bend and you know the, the other way. So that lays out and it looks to be exactly the same as the old ones. That should fit nicely. Just gotta spray these sort of mount, plastic mountain things with some penetrating fluid. Get those loose and yeah, start removing the caliper again. These should just be finger tight now. Hope you guys are able to see with the light. Uh, I wasn't really planning for it to be sunny. It's hardly ever sunny, so that was a bit of a shock. But it, sun shining through the window on here with the lights, it's a little bit difficult, but this is the time I have to do this. So hope you guys can see anyways. And now I'll just lay this one. Up here, if you remember, this caliper is seized, but the rest, the pins and everything slide really well. So I'm gonna let that be. I'm just gonna clean up you know, the surface on here a little bit and loosen those and put in the new pads. The only thing I've done is I cleaned up all this area with some brake clean and cleaned up the area here where everything's gonna slide. There was just 
a little bit of brake dust on there, but that's not going to be an issue at all. And then there are different schools of thought of what to do with the brake pads. Some people just put them in. I like to put a little bit of copper grease just on the contact surfaces where they slide, just to, well, I mean, in my opinion, it prevents it from sticking and it also prevents brake squeal. So the trick is not to use too much. And like I said, this is some people like to use different stuff. Um, this is what's worked for me as long as I've been doing brakes. So just gonna have, you know, tiny amount where it slides. And that's gonna be different, you know, on different vehicles, depending on, you know, where they slide, where they brake pads touch. So you guys gotta figure that out on your different cars. So there we go. And okay, that's upside down. Make sure to not get any on the on the friction surface, of course. And there we go. That snaps into place. Now for the one on the back. Okay, both of those are in place. Now we're ready for the caliper. Got a new shiny caliper here. And with the brake pads, we got new bolts for the caliper. They're pretty much the same as the other ones, just a little more sunken in there, but we're gonna use the new ones because they have sort of built in I guess some type of Loctite, so that's good. Let's see. All right, that one's starting to touch on the threads. Well, got the bottom one as well. All right, that's all tight. Now, you guys see we got to fit the brake hose here. So this is the side, it has new copper crush washers. That's great. It fits over here. I think it'll be a little difficult for me to film that, but there's just a plug here. I'm gonna remove that, remove that plug, thread that into place. Then I'll start loosening all of these, laying it into place, and we'll remove it on the other end. New brake hose is in place down here and it's been tightened. And I removed the fasteners here for these plastic clips to hold in place. However, I do believe that they're quite fragile. So I'm gonna leave them on the old hose itself and then remove those on my bench or down here on the ground carefully so I don't crack anything. But I've just laid the new hose in place. Everything seems fine up here, so now I'm going to loosen the joint here between the hose and the uh, metal brake pipe here and then try and quickly get this new part in there uh, to just not spill too much brake fluid. I've already pre-loosened this here before and I've sprayed it quite a few times so I hope it should come off relatively easily. Gonna move this hose a little bit out of the way for now. It's just in the way. It's quite tight in here when I also have a camera sort of in the way. But I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And, uh, I did loosen it first with a uh, a wrench, you know, made for um, one of those open end wrenches made for brake lines. But then it, once it's loose, it's just a lot easier to deal with a small. 11 millimeter like this one. We're seeing brake fluid come out here a little bit. I think that it's yeah, it's finger tight now. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna move that out and put my finger in front of there to not get any debris in there and just clean off this bracket just a tiny bit. go. Okay. 
I just completely removed the old caliper and all of that off to the side. Now we have plenty of space here. So I'm just gonna route the line as it is supposed to be so I can sort of see, don't get a weird kink on it or something, but still trying to be a little quick so I don't spill too much white fluid. And I think something, something like that should be pretty good. That should. Yeah. Yep, that feels good. Okay, that feels promising. Yeah, it's starting to go on there. I'm just gonna dry off my hands a little bit. Once again, I forgot to bring gloves out here, so I'm trying to get better at that, like we mentioned in the last Range Rover video, but sometimes you just simply forget. Okay, now it's pretty much ready to just tighten the last bit. You don't have to go crazy, but you know, just tight enough. There we go. Now the most important thing though is I like to use some brake clean on there that sort of cleans off any other brake fluid. And then let's get a paper towel. I'm just gonna wipe the whole area as dry as I can. It's a good thing about brake clean as well that does evaporate even though it's cold today. It'll take a while but it will evaporate. And then we can check back later if we have leaks. Got the clips off here, it's just a little screwdriver in there, bent back to back of it. And that's fine, they're really quite neat. They go over this part here, that, so the, uh, uh, I can't think of it right now, but the part that's been crimped, yeah. And they sit here and there, that's a quite neat design, so I'm gonna put those back, just go with the little bolts in there. One thing I'm gonna do while I wait, which is, I think just an easier way to let things be able to bleed later, I have checked that the master cylinder is full, but I am just gonna crack the bleed nipple here. And actually quite a bit. And I'm just gonna let you know gravity do its work. Hopefully it's gonna work even though there's a kink up in here where it sort of goes up and then down. But hopefully, you know, some brake fluid will start coming out here and it will just make the bleeding job later a lot easier. Now that looks really nice now with these clips in place over here. I clipped this uh, cable back in here, which last time I couldn't figure out what it was, but now I think I know it must be for wear sensors or something, which maybe it's not used on this model or something. It's definitely hasn't been used and it was just sitting on the bleed nipple before. So that's what I'm gonna do when I'm done. Put that over the bleed nipple and uh, let it stay there. Otherwise, we've got new pads, and like we discussed in the last video, discs are still in good shape. I mean, yes, that's just from it sitting in here now, but there's uh, no real noticeable lip on there. Plenty of life left in those, but uh, new pads are so cheap, so no point in putting the old ones back. I think pads for both sides were like around $20 or something, so um, yeah, it's good to have everything new here. New hoses, and I know that... Once I put the wheels back on here, I don't have to uh, pay attention back here for a while. Know that the brakes in the back are good for uh, at least a couple years to go. But I still have this open here. I haven't got any fluid coming out yet, so uh, I'm going to go get my one-man vacuum-operated uh, uh, brake bleeder, and then we'll bleed the rest of that. This is a really great tool to have. I highly, highly recommend to get one if you don't. Not only can you bleed your brakes by yourself, but you can uh, empty out, you know, places where there's fluid, you want to suck it up in small amounts. You can test anything vacuum operated, if it works or not. And it's really cool. So all this is just a hand operated vacuum pump, a couple of hoses, some accessories, and this little container, which is really cool. So you put the lid on here and it's airtight and you pull vacuum from one side. So over here, and on the other side, you put on what you want to suck up, and that 
and some the containers. That's what I'm going to do right now. Put a hose over the bleed nipple over here for this container and suck the uh, air out and some of the fluid into here. I walked away for a little bit just to give this a little more of a chance to gravity bleed. And as you see, we have fluid in here and fluid in there as well. So that is actually working a little bit. But now let's uh, vacuum bleed. So here is the pump. We'll pump up some pressure and you can already see air and a little bit of fluid moving in there. And we got some vacuum on that, so just gonna let that go. I did check that the uh, master cylinder is completely full, the reservoir, so once I have blood this one, I'm gonna fill it back up to the max again. And yeah, takes a little bit of time, but uh, it's definitely one way of doing it without having to have another person in the car pushing on the pedal. Also, some cars uh, with ABS, probably this one as well, it is very difficult to um, to do it with just the traditional method with the pedal. Doing it like this with vacuum then is the only way, and well then, it's also quite convenient if you're alone like I am at the moment. Brakes are all bled, so I can put on the new nice wheels on here. I got the new lug nuts which fit these wheels and the studs on here. Then put the car back on the ground, do the same thing on the other side. But I'm not going to film that because it is going to be exactly the same on this side. And that's it for this episode. We finished off the rear brakes now and I'm really, really happy with the results. It was really quite, quite easy to do. And I do understand why people just replace the caliper and not, don't bother with it. Because I don't remember exactly, but I mean, it is somewhere maybe between $50 and $80 or something for a new caliper. And well, you can see how rusty and terrible the old one looked. And you know, the bleeder screw is completely blocked and probably rusted in there solid. So you would just spend so much time sorting this out that it's not even worth it. So... If you have a similar issue, just get new calipers. I thought this was super easy to do. And a lot of parts for these cars are not very expensive at all. It's like many other British cars that that's great. So brake pads were not expensive at all. Calipers not expensive either, even though I do think these are BMW calipers. Not quite sure. Um, brake hoses, things like that, not expensive at all. So it's just nicer to replace things. And also, it's my wife's car. I want it to be safe. So now I know that the rear brakes are good and safe when we test drove the car. Um, before it, the brakes ceased on, the brakes felt really good, so I do think that the front ones are fine and they haven't gotten hot or anything, but when I do change over the tires on the front, which I'll do a little bit later, I'll have a look over them just make sure that they look fine. Um, I think that the car was MOT'd less than a year ago, so there shouldn't be any major issues. Uh, this was probably something they maybe didn't catch on the MOT because it was really hard to see. But there is definitely, definitely some rust on here, like we saw in the previous video. So, very happy I replaced that. Anyways, I'm going to continue working on the car now. I am um, yeah, going to replace the wheels in the front as well, put the new ones on. I'm not going to show you what they look like on the car until I've got all of them on and the car is out of the workshop. And I'm going to tackle the last things in the engine bay, like I said, replacing the belts. I do pulleys and all that. There will be a video on that. So that will be um, yeah, how to replace the primary, secondary drive belts on a supercharged Range Rover. Anyways, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And I would like to take this time to thank my supporters over on Patreon for your continued support on this channel. I really, really appreciate it a lot. It makes me be able to make these videos. Now at the moment I'm making three videos a week and uh, that really does help out a lot. So uh, anyways, until next time, I'm Adam and this was Little Mythic Classic. I'll see you soon.